Now, paradigm is sort of a buzzword of the, the age that we're living in. And when I first started to study this material, I never heard of paradigm. I did hear of conditioning. I heard something about conscious and subconscious mind, but I never really understood it. You know, Napoleon Hill wrote an entire uh, chapter on the subconscious mind, and it's written very, very well. But you know, you could read it and still not properly understand it. I had a great mentor one time said, you don't understand anything until you can explain it to someone else so that they understand it. Now, you know, I had been working for nine years trying to figure out why did Bob change? You know, what really happened? Why did the debate change take place in my mind? You remember I told you I went from about 4,000 a year to, in a relatively short period of time, to over a million dollars a year. And, and I was not that bright, believe me. I never got good grades when I was in school, and I never stayed there very long. And so that led me to understand that earning money and intelligence have, they just don't equate. You're gonna find people who are functionally illiterate, they can neither read nor write, yet they're earning millions of dollars a year. You're gonna find other people who are absolutely brilliant. They've got degrees coming right off the end of their business card, and yet they're broke. Now I want you to think about this for a moment. This is really important information. Well, I had studied all these books and I had them all over the place. I had recordings. Now when I started, we were playing with long playing records. See, I've been around the park for a while. And then we went into cassettes and then of course to CDs. Well, I had a great library of all this material and study and study and study, but I still didn't understand. I didn't understand why I changed. I couldn't get the picture. And then I met a man in a seminar. I heard about him first. I was living in Chicago. I was working at Nightingale Conan at the time. And somebody told me about a man that was running a seminar in Vancouver, British Columbia. Bang, I jumped on the plane and away I went. And I spent a couple of days there. This guy was so good. The second he opened his mouth, I knew he knew what he was talking about. And when his seminar was over, I went up and I said, you know, I'd really like to spend a couple of days with you. I remember him looking at his watch and he said, well, he said, I'd probably like to spend a couple of days with you, Bob, but he said, I've got to catch a plane. And I said, well, I've got to catch a plane too. And then he asked me, he said, where are you going? I said, I'm going home. And he said, where do you live? And I, I said, uh, I live in Chicago. We said, what are you doing here? He, I said, I come out to hear you speak. And he looked at me. He said, you flew all the way from Chicago? I said, you know, if I had walked, it would have been worth it. You are very good. And the information you've got is even better. And he said, well, look, and I'm not going to be in Chicago anytime in the near future. But he said, I am going to be in Toronto in a couple of weeks. And I said, well, I'm from Toronto. My family's in Toronto. I'll jump in a plane and come over. It's only an hour away. And the two of us met in what was then the Skyline Hotel. We sat down what was going to be a two or three hour meeting. We were there for three days. And he shared something with me that literally changed my whole concept. It took everything I had been studying for nine years and just it just funneled it all into place. It was like I'd been playing with a, a massive jigsaw puzzle and I couldn't get the pieces to fit. Do you know, frequently if we're playing with the jigsaw puzzle, I imagine you've played with one from time to time. Can you imagine if you had a jigsaw puzzle, all the pieces on the table, but there was no lid for the box, there was no picture, and you're trying to figure out how to get them to fit? You have a problem. Well, he said, that's the problem with us. He said, we have a mind. It's a marvelous mind. In fact, Dr. J.B. Ryan, who was down in Duke University, probably one of the foremost authorities in the area of the mind, he said the mind is the greatest power in all of creation. James Allen, in a little book, As Man Thinketh, he said mind is the master power that molds and makes, and man is mind. And evermore he takes the tool of thought and shaping what he wills, brings forth a thousand joys or a thousand ills. He thinks in secret and it comes to pass, his environment is but his looking glass. Now he said, Bob, you think simultaneously on three planes of understanding. I said, yeah, I know that. He says, you don't know that. He said, if you know that, you wouldn't be asking the questions that you're asking. And then he smiled. See, what he did, he wanted to get my attention. He said, you're a spiritual being, you have an intellect, and you live in a physical body. You're a triune being, you live simultaneously in three planes of understanding. Now, what you've got to understand is how to get those parts of you all lined up. Do you know that's called integrity, when your thoughts, feelings, and actions are all in sync.
You say, well, isn't everybody like that? No. A lot of people are thinking one thing, feel another, and then doing another. There's no, there's no coordination. It's not lined up inside. Why? Because we're not taught how to line it up. Do you know there's a psychiatrist in Florida? If you went to my website, you go to bobproctor.com and wander around, you'll find it somewhere. His name's Dr. John Mike. He's a leading psychiatrist, child psychiatrist. He said, I taught him more about the mind in one year than he had learned in four years of medical school and five years of psychiatric training. His wife, Susan, is also a psychiatrist. They were blown away when I shared with them what I'm about to share with you. Now, the man told me, he said, listen, there was a doctor in San Antonio, Texas in 1934, Dr. Thurman Fleet. And he said he was very into the healing arts. He was into the holistic health. He wanted to heal the whole person. And he said, you know, we've been treating people physically, but he said, when you treat them physically, you're treating a symptom. You're not treating the cause of the problem. We do that with our balance sheets. We're trying to change our finances when we're not treating the cause of our finances. I looked at him. I said, what do you mean? Well, he said, you lack money. You're trying to change your income. You don't change your income by changing your income. You change your income by changing something inside. Your income is an expression of what's going on inside. Just the same as though there's disease in the body, it originates in the mind. Now, he said, the problem is no one's ever seen the mind. The mind is not a thing. Mind is an activity. Now, most people, when you talk about the mind, they think about the brain. But the brain is not the mind any more than the fingernail is. You see, brain is an electronic switching station. As you activate brain cells, you alter the vibratory rate of part or all of your body. And as we activate the brain cells, we change our vibration, we change what we attract. But that's another story. He said the brain is only a part of the mind. Mind is movement. Body is the manifestation of that movement. Now, this Dr. Fleet said, since nobody's ever seen the mind, I'm going to make a picture of the mind. Because he said we have to have an image to operate with. There is the picture. You look at it and you think, come on. You know, it looks like a comic character. Well, I'm going to tell you something. If you stay with me and you study this like I've studied it, I'll show you how to change your life like night and day. Change your income, your health, your happiness, your relationships, because it all happens in the mind. Now, you see, the large circle is the mind. The small circle here is the body. The body is the instrument of the mind. That's really what it is. Now, you'll notice in the large circle, there's a horizontal line right through the center. The top half of the large circle is the conscious mind. The bottom half of the large circle is the subconscious mind. Now, the conscious mind operates quite different from the subconscious mind. Now, think of this for a moment. Your conscious mind has hooked up to it like antennae, five sensory factors. You see them there? You can see, hear, smell, taste, touch. They're like little antennae sticking out of the conscious mind. And you see, from outside, information is being fed into our conscious mind. We go by what we hear, see, smell, taste, touch. That's how I'm communicating to your conscious mind right now. Well, we have all kinds of information coming in. And a lot of people call that thinking. That is not thinking. That's mental activity. Earl Nightingale one time said, if most people said what they were thinking, they would be speechless. Your conscious mind has the ability to accept or reject any information that comes to it. Now look at it. There's a power flowing in to your conscious mind. It flows to and through you. As it flows into your conscious mind, you have a choice. You can originate information or you can pick information up from outside. Now that's all happening in the conscious mind. It will do nothing to change your life. It's the subconscious mind where it all happens. Now you see, your subconscious mind has no ability to reject. It'll accept anything you give to it. That's right. So you build pictures in your conscious mind, you impress them upon your subconscious mind, and those images then are expressed with and through the body. See, the body moves into action and produces results. So what's the bottom line here? We have the ability to originate a picture. We can plant the picture in the subconscious mind, and then that idea will be expressed in action and produce the results. Now, you've read that in many books. You consciously impress the idea upon the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is also referred to as the emotional mind. You'll see it's the emotional mind. You've got to get an idea and get emotionally involved in it. But you know, there's all kinds of people that build ideas, they get emotionally involved, but it doesn't happen. 
Why? It's because your subconscious mind has been programmed. That's right. It's been programmed at birth. In fact, it's programmed prior to birth. Now, this drawing can be worth its weight in gold to you. I visualize myself, I see the stick person. I see the top half of my head as my conscious mind. I see the bottom half as my subconscious, and everything from the neck down is the body. And I have learned that my behavior, whatever I'm doing, is nothing but an expression of what's going on inside. Now, here's the paradox. I can be thinking something very positive. I can see something good happen, but I'm getting bad results. I see myself earning more money, but I'm going deeper in debt. I study the material, but it doesn't happen. And what happens then? I start to think there's something wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you, but your subconscious mind has been programmed. You'll see, that's called a paradigm. Now, I'm not gonna take the time now. I'm gonna come back, and I'm gonna show you how that paradigm's formed, and then I'm going to show you how the paradigm can be changed. But I'm gonna tell you this. This drawing can be worth its weight in gold to you. If you will take this drawing and incorporate it as part of your thinking, and every time you think of yourself, you think of this drawing, see conscious, subconscious body, and understand the subconscious operates totally different than the conscious mind. The conscious has the ability to accept or reject, but not the subconscious. Uh -uh. The subconscious mind can only accept, and it's not able to differentiate between what's real and what's imagined. That's a beautiful truth. We have to understand it. 